Hey everybody, Dina Monoxlis here with you. This video is for all you SVTCL and VR users out there. We've got a cool new upgrade for your SVTs here. Check it out. Ampeg has come out with a cool new power tube retainer clamp. With this new clamp, instead of securing the tube from the top, this new design actually clamps the base of the power tube and holds it securely in place without ever having to touch the glass portion of the tube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to retrofit these new retainer clamps in your SVT. Now for the safety disclaimer. If you're not 100% confident in doing this procedure by yourself, please bring it into an authorized Ampeg repair shop that can do this mod for you. It's an easy mod to do, but I have to warn you, working on a tube amp can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Now with that being said, follow my instructions carefully and you should be cool. A couple of things you might want to get together before you start though. A small Phillips screwdriver, an Allen key with a 564th Allen in it, a small dish to put your parts in, screws and whatnot, a clean shop towel, and of course a pair of latex gloves. Funny how I have all this stuff conveniently located behind my SVT. Okay, first thing we want to do is to remove all the screws that fasten the perforated cover to the back of the amp. This is where the small dish comes in handy to put the screws so they don't go running off. So I'll start here. Remove this screw. Once the screws are all removed, this cover should just pop right off. So I'll remove all these screws, get the cover popped off, and come right back. Okay, now that we've got the grill out of the way, let's put on our gloves. Now, if you don't have a pair of latex gloves, that's fine. As long as you have a good, clean pair of gloves, the reason why we do this is to avoid getting any of our skin oil on the glass of the tubes. Next thing we want to do is we want to just very gently remove the tube retainer from the top of the tube. And it's a matter of just pulling it up a little bit and putting it off to the side. Then we want to just really easily wiggle the tube out of the socket. We don't want to wrench it too hard or force it because we might break a solder trace on the board below. So you just want to very gently wiggle it out like so until it releases, and then just put the tube aside. And we're gonna do this for all six tubes. Now you might wanna make a note of the location of each tube that you pull out. Okay, now that we've got the tubes out, we're gonna focus on removing the old tube retainer clamps. Now this is where the 564 Allen key comes in handy. If you have a key like this, or if you have an individual Allen wrench, that's fine. Um, now, I know the older CLs, like my 95 CL back there, used Phillip heads to fasten the retainer clamps in. This newer Heritage uses Allens. I honestly don't know when the changeover was from Phillips to Allens, but it was sometime between 95 and 2010. So whichever one, if it is an Allen, it is a 564 that you're gonna need. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this tube retainer clip, and I'm just gonna take my Allen key, and as you can see, I'm using my iPhone as a light to light up the area a little bit. You can do the same, makes it easy to see where you're working. Okay, and I'm just gonna remove this Allen screw. I'm just gonna back it out. Now, one thing I can do is just keep my finger around that Allen. So when it does come loose, it's not gonna go anywhere but in my finger. Okay, so there's one. I'm just gonna take the, that Allen screw out. Put that in my little tray because we're going to need it later. And then I'm going to do the back one. There should be two for each socket. And again, I'm just going to loosen it with my Allen key. If you have a small Allen wrench, it might be easier. There's the second one, okay? So this is the old tube retainer clamp. And as you saw before, this part sits on top of the glass tube. Okay, so I'm going to remove the remaining five get that done and I'll come right back. Okay, so as you can see, I was able to remove all six of the old tube retainer clamps. I even took my shop rag and tidied up the inside of the amplifier, removed all the old dust and whatnot. Um, one thing I wanna point out, on the screws that you remove from the old tube clamps, you'll notice there's a little black washer that we're gonna reuse, okay? So make sure you have all those little black washers along with the screws. Now you remove 12 screws, we're gonna put 12 screws back in the amplifier. I know the new clamps only have one hole for one screw, 
but we're going to use all 12 screws. So check this out. If you notice in the front of each tube socket, there's a hole that we're going to install just the screw. We're not going to address the clamps just yet. So I'm going to do all six of the fronts first and then we'll come back and install the tube clamp. So let me get a close up here. And the reason why we're doing this is because we want to secure each tube socket to the actual plate. So I'm going to do all six fronts and then we'll come back and we'll do the tube clamp. So now that I've been able to install all six of the front screws, we're good to go ahead and install the tube clamps now. Now one quick trip that I want to just point out that might make life a lot easier is I put the screw into the hole on the tube clamp before putting the clamp into the chassis. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier rather than trying to put the clamp down and then fumble trying to get the screw through that little hole. So I put the screw through the hole and then all I'm doing is I'm holding the screw in with my finger and I'm going to locate it just over the screw hole, the back screw hole on each tube socket. Okay. So now once that's in place, I'm going to go ahead with my Allen wrench and just sock it down. Okay, so I'm going to do all six tube clamps and we'll come back. Alrighty, so I was able to get all six of my new tube retainer clamps installed. Now we're ready to put the tubes in. Now, before we put the tubes in, I just want to explain one thing on these new tube retainer clamps. If you notice, there's this little bump out on the band on each one of the clamps. What this is for is depending on the brand of 6550s you use, you might notice that when you get your tubes in, when you go to clamp this down, it might be too tight. You won't be able to clamp it down. This loop or bump here is there to allow you to open up the band so that you can fit this around your power tube. So if, if it's too tight, you want to open it up. If it's too loose, you can actually close it down so that you have the proper fit when you go to clamp that down around your tube. Okay, so let's put the tubes in. All right, so we're gonna start with the back left and work our way across the back row and then we'll do the front row. Now, like I mentioned earlier, hopefully you marked your tubes when you pull them out of the socket so that the same tube will go back in the same socket. If you didn't, it's not that big of a deal providing you're using matched power tubes. In this case we are, so it's not as big of a deal marking them, but it's always a good practice to do so. Notice I'm wearing my gloves again. Again, we're handling the tube, so we don't want to get any of our skin oil on the tube glass. I should have mentioned this earlier too. If you don't have gloves, it's not the end of the world. You can use a clean shop towel or a clean shop rag to handle your tubes. Okay, so we're gonna install the tubes in the sockets now. You'll notice that each tube has a little key on it. That key fits into the tube socket a particular way. So there's no way you can install the tubes the wrong way. They can only go in one way, all right? So we're just gonna work the tube and it's in the key. And then we're just gonna very gently wiggle the tube back into its socket. Okay, and we wanna make sure that the tube is completely seated onto that tube socket so that there is no space between the base of the tube and that socket, okay, which in this case it is. All right. And there you have it. Clamp down, ready to go. Okay, now we're gonna do the next tube socket next to it. Again, there's the key. Might take a little finessing trying to get these JJs into the tube, into the band, like that. Once it's in, okay, you just simply wiggle it down. And again, I know that's seated properly on the tube socket. There we go. There's number two. And then we're going to finish up. We'll do the remaining four and we'll be back. Okay, so there you go. I've got all six of my 6550s installed. Everything's clamped down 
all the tubes are seated properly. I just got to button up the back of the amp, put the metal grill back on, rebias, and we'll be ready to go. All right, folks. Well, that's it for me. I'm out of here. I hope you enjoy your new old or old new retrofitted SVT, however you want to call it. Some important information before we go. This clamp kit can be ordered through any authorized Ampeg dealer. The information's right here, the bottom of the screen. The part number, as well as the name of the part, should be good to go. My name's Dino Monoxilis. Like I always say, play more bass. <laughs>